Hello, world. What is up? Welcome to Build at Home. I'm your host, Matt Forte. I'm coming to you from my home, as I believe is our next guest. Uh, but before we jump in, I just want to talk briefly uh, again about NoKidHungry.org. Millions of children are losing the healthy meals they depend on as the coronavirus closes schools nationwide. Actually, I checked their site. 540 million meals actually have been lost. Uh, no Kid Hungry has a plan to feed them, which is great, but we need your help. So if you happen to be a person in a position to give, uh, head over to NoKidHungry.org and, and take a look at all the amazing work they're doing and see if you could help out. We could feed uh, these kids. Thanks so much. Uh, all right, let's get on with the show. Our next guest is a hilarious Emmy Award nominated actor. You, of course, recognize him as Kenneth the Page in 30 Rock or the voice of Fix It Felix in Wreck It Ralph. Right now, you can hear him starring as Beasley alongside uh, Paul Rudd, Paul Appel, Amber Ruffin, and a ton of other incredibly funny people in the new Audible original Escape from Virtual Island from writer John Lutz. Uh, the show is outstanding. I'm super excited he's here. Wherever you are, please join me in welcoming to the show the truly great Jack McBrayer is here. Jack, how are you, sir? Hello. Hello. Hello, sir. Thank you for having me. Yo, oh, my you. gosh. What a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for being here with us or being there, as it were. Yes. <laughs> So, Jack, uh, first and foremost, I'm really excited to talk about the show. We're going to get to the show, of course, uh, but more important than anything right now, how are you, sir? How are you doing? How are you holding up? How are things going over there? I'm doing all right. Uh, you do realize what you miss. Um, I guess I was yeah. much more of a social creature than I realized. <laughs> um, so I'm very excited just to see human beings again. Nice. <laughs> These are nice. I mean, like I like interaction with people, but man. Yeah, Just out there and hug each other. <laughs> exactly. I, you seem like a person who would be really eager to get back out and get back to yeah. hugging. I, yeah. I don't know that we're there yet, uh, no, uh, sadly. But in the meantime, we'll we'll have to make do with the digital hugs, as it were. Yes. I'm happy to see that you're looking safe and sound and, and healthy and reasonably sane at this point. Uh, you know, uh, based on <laughs> characters you've played and appearances I've seen on various late night shows like Conan and such, I don't think I'm crazy in making the assumption that you're, you strike me as a positive guy. Has that attribute been particularly valuable during this incredibly scary and crazy time? Has it been hard to stay positive or mm, how, how is that know, going? Uh, for the most part, it is very helpful. Uh, and uh, sometimes I feel necessary. Um, mm -hmm. I did hit a wall yesterday, but oh, no. I think that's just, uh, natural as well. I mean, you yeah. can't. Go boop, 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 boop. Every now and then you gotta take a little dip, right? For like sure. The spot, stock market, <laughs> uh, but uh, like the in, economy. in general, yes, sir. I, I try to keep optimistic, and uh, you know, you realize stuff about yourself when you're just yeah. sitting on your hands all day long. And I'm trying to figure out what I can do to be helpful during mm -hmm. this. Time. Like, yeah. how can I be of service? Yeah. You just yeah. you really take stock of what you got and what you, and I'm just talking about like your health. Right. It really is For amazing. Sure. Like when you just take inventory of what you got going, you, yeah, that's a heap and helpful, help heap and I'm very grateful. <laughs> <laughs> that's just, uh, that's been a common thread uh, that, that I've uh, been talking about with a lot of people is that. Uh, I've become as scared as I am and, and as nervous and anxiety riddled as I've become. Uh, I'm also very grateful and relieved for a lot of things that, that yeah. I'm still able to do this, that I still have my right. job. I know that's not the case for a lot of people. And I'm very grateful that, that I'm able to, to watch all the things that I watch, that I have a Netflix subscription right. and all these different <laughs> things. Like you just, it's you do start to take stock. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you don't mind me asking, I, I don't want to get too personal and pull the curtain too far back, but when you hit that right. wall, my how Netflix did you, network. what did you do? How did you navigate that? How did you get past the wall? Well, it, it's not the first time something like this has happened. I, I'm talking about from a very personal level of mm -hmm. uh, just reaching a breaking point of sorts. Yeah. Um, and I think part of it is just the isolation, which is something that uh, so Hard. many of us are unfamiliar with to this mm -hmm. level. Um, and so because I have experienced, uh, again, I'll just say, uh, hitting a wall uh in the past i give myself permission to be mm -hmm. cranky i give myself permission yeah. to be bummed out a little bit and you know i do have obligations that i have to uh participate in which i'm happy to do but i'm also going to be okay with like you know being bummed out for the rest of the day yeah. or yeah. i mean it sounds crazy but like sometimes i pop in a movie that makes me cry and then that's a good just like purging of emotion so 
Yeah. I like that because I've been hearing a lot of people, uh, you know, going for the nostalgia thing, revisiting films from their from when they were kids or, or comedies or things that are comforting. But you'll lean into it. You will intentionally find a film or, or something that makes you cry, and that's what you'll watch. I mean, yeah. Do you have a go to? Uh, like, <laughs> like something you can count on? Like this is going to make me cry every time. I know it. I do and you know what? I'm not embarrassed to say it. The Royal Tenenbaums. The Royal. Oh. oh. I'm telling you, like, but also yeah. what I like about it is because there's such a great deal of humor in there. And it is just, a, it's a beautiful movie. Yeah. That's I love a great film. People are like, you know which one I love. Uh, but also, <laughs> like, there's a line in there that sometimes I'll just pull it up on YouTube and it'll really? get you. And sometimes that's all you need. And then, yeah, just a little bit just to get you there. That's yeah. fascinating. Just keep um, well, to, uh, to that end, you know, one of the things we've also been talking about is what people are watching, what they're doing. So I know you've watched the Royal Tenenbaums. Are you listening to anything? Are you reading anything? Like, have you uh, watched shows or movies that you wouldn't normally watch now that you have this time that you're you're in isolation and you're trying to do these things? What, what's what's your, the content look like on your side? What have you been looking uh, at? This is going to sound crazy. I can't believe like this is the show where I'm just like spilling my guts, but <laughs> because I hadn't seen it in so long. I've been watching episodes of 30 Rock. Have you really? I have, which I hadn't watched in years and years because that's kind of gross. But, uh, you know, there was a curiosity to, to see, like, does it hold up? Right. Um, it does. You know, how <laughs> young did we look? Uh, just all this kind of stuff. Like, would the content from, you know, 2006 to 2013 still work as I'm yeah. watching it during a pandemic in 2020? For sure. Um, yeah, what a crazy but, lens through which to see all that stuff. I guess. Absolutely. Uh, but to your point about like revisiting or nostalgia or something, it is nice. <laughs> it's nice to see old friends right. um, just to remember what that experience was like. And now that there has been some time and distance from the show, I can appreciate it. And it yeah. was funny. It was. It, it funny. really was. It's one Fine. of my favorites. Is it kind of like home movies for you in a way to go back and watch it? Yeah. <laughs> it kind of is. And yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's fun. Another thing that I do, ugh, I'm just spilling my IMDb page is what I'm doing. I love it. One thing that I will watch because of the home movie feel of it mm -hmm. is getting Sarah Marshall. It's what, like I that's, get to watch wow. a Hawaiian vacation that I was at. <laughs> it was awesome. It it's was incredible. Awesome. <laughs> I, um, I love that film in an explicable amount. Uh, I love that film because it's not only just a wonderful movie. I actually coincidentally I had my honeymoon at the exact same place where that was filmed. So even though I'm not in it, it's like a home movie for me too. <laughs> it was the best. It yeah. Was the best. So beautiful. Yeah. Uh, absolutely amazing. Well, uh, first of all, thank you for spilling your guts and talking to me about all those <laughs> things. I really appreciate that. Um, <laughs> But, uh, you know, to that end, talking about the things that you're watching and you're you're uh, using as your distraction, you've got uh, an incredible distraction that you're a part of that you made that's out uh, right now, uh, an Audible original, uh, Escape from Virtual Island. And for all the things I'm watching and, and consuming right now, it is by far one of the funniest distractions to come along. I'm, I'm really curious, how did you get involved? How did you come to be a part of this amazing project? Of course. Well, in a in a bit of a way, it's kind of like a reunion. Um, John Lutz mm -hmm. wrote the uh, podcast um, and I've known him for decades. We did comedy in Chicago um, way back in the day. Uh, it was directed by my other comedy friend, Peter Gross, um, uh, Paul Rudd for getting Sarah Marshall, mm -hmm. Paula Pell from 30 Rock and Saturday Night Live. Um, so it was kind of just like old home week, Amber Ruffin. Yeah. Second City way back in the day. Um, it was just nice to be pulled into a project where I already knew so many people. And, you know, when you have that history, when you have that shorthand, it just makes it so much easier and so much more fun yeah. um, and just uh, enjoyable. Yeah. And so, uh, so yes, uh, John Lutz, when he was writing it, I think he kind of had me in mind when he was creating Beasley, which I was very okay with. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask about that because there are these great little character beats uh, like his obsession with preventing the water stains during his interrogation or or they ask who's in charge and you hear Beasley proudly claim, not me, like almost like I, I am absolutely not in charge. And it just felt so custom tailored for a type of character that you nail. I, I didn't know if 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 he had written that like with you in mind or if you brought some like McBrayerisms to the character, how collaborative it was or what that was like. But well, John does know me very well, so mm -hmm. The heavy lifting there. With that being said, once you're in the studio and once we're recording, we'll do it several times as it's scripted. But then, mm -hmm. you know, we'll go off off 
off track a little bit too, which is always fun. Were you guys able, I know so often the case with these kinds of uh, projects, uh, if you don't need to align everyone's schedule and spend the money to get them in a room together, you won't. And so you end up doing things in isolation, but did you ever get a chance to do anything Simpson style and get people in a studio at the same time? Uh, what, what was the process like of making it? Unfortunately, this one, we were all separate because we were separate. Yeah. Different cities and that sort of thing. I had been in London for six months in That's 2019. Right. And so they had to wait until I came back to America. Okay. Uh, so I recorded in July of 2019. Um, and uh, everyone else did it uh, at different times. In different at different cities. times. Yeah. That's that's amazing because everyone's <laughs> timing and, and the way it's it's cut together. You've I, never, it's so perfect. Well, and that's a credit to the editing as well. Yeah. Um, they it, did a phenomenal it, job. It, yeah. It's a village. But yeah, yeah <laughs> it's such a great, you know, final product. Yeah. Does that present its own set of challenges when you have to work and, and do it separately? Like obviously, the preferred is you get to play off someone like a Paul Rudd or a Paul Appel, but, you know, technically it's not possible in these scenarios. So you got to do what you got to do. Is it is it harder to, to do it when you got to be alone like that? <sighs> At first blush, I would say yes, mm -hmm. uh, just because especially in my background in improvisation, it's all right. about collaboration, ensemble, reacting to your partner, that kind of thing. Um, but if you have a good director and you have a good script, they're going to find a coherent, cohesive kind mm -hmm. of uh, feel for yeah. the theme. And so a lot of it is just trusting that the director is getting from each actor the right level, the right emotional investment, the right uh, in, you know, intensity. Um, and then it, it'll all be stitched together. All right. But yes, yeah. in general, I do like playing off of other Of course, people. of course. Uh, Beasley has a character trait that I love that uh, I've seen you uh, play before, which is the refusal to swear or curse. Uh, and I'm curious, is that something that just like comes with Jack McBray or is that like a package deal or is that something people keep just writing in for you in the characters that you play? I feel that that might be thrust upon me. Because once we hang up, I'm going to swear up a storm. <laughs> <laughs> it is the internet, Jack. Feel free to say whatever you want right now. <laughs> Belief has but, been called to my home multiple times. So much where did, where did that start, do you think? Because it is like a uh, like a Jack McBrayer trope now where like, I feel like you have such a unique and, and specific voice. And, and keep me honest here, but I feel like you're one of those guys that will show up to a set and, and very often you'll have a director say to you, just give me the Jack McBrayer thing. That's what I want. I want you to do the thing that you do. Does that happen a lot? I mean, I'm not going to say no. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. I would like doing it. And, yeah. and it'd be different if it was like some albatross that I'm like, oh, gosh, this is what a cross to bear. But I, I like it. And yeah. And one thing that I have discovered about it, and I think other people have too, it can be that character can be a good foil mm -hmm. to a host of other characters. So, um, you know, to be a sweet simpleton can play off of a great number of other characters to, to good effect. For sure. And I, that's a, that's that's underplaying the the complexity of your the sweet simpleton as you call it. But uh, well, I think the thing is like your version of a nice guy, right? The the character that you get asked to play uh, often, there's a, such an incredible sincerity, and it, and it and it feels so genuine. Even though none of us really know anyone who is that nice and that sincere, it feels so real. And I think that's why people connect to it. When you were starting out and you were at Second City and you were doing all these things, did you ever anticipate in a million years like that was the facet of your personality that would click and, and that people would ask you to play and that's what would connect? No, but oh. I mean, and I'm not like selling myself short. I have limited range. <laughs> 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 you're, you're too humble, sir. You're too humble. Well, in Second City, just doing improv in Chicago, one of the great joys is that you can be any character you want and create mm -hmm. any environment, any relationship, any dynamic. And uh, it was just an endless possibility there. And so I did learn, I took one acting class in college and mm -hmm. coincidentally an accounting class in college and the professors both gave the same piece of advice, which I thought was strange, but it makes sense. <clears throat> the advice was maximize your assets, minimize your liabilities. Hmm. And so I think eventually I just let that sink in a little bit. Yeah. And so, yes, I, 
I know what I can do. And very fortunately, I like what I do. Am I scared to challenge myself and try new things and, and stretch and grow and all these things? No, I'm not. But also I know what I bring to the table yeah. and I know how that can be helpful to a project. And so yeah. I like that. I, I still like that. Yeah. When the day comes when I'm, I'm tired of it or bored of it or whatever, I'll have to take a step back and reevaluate. But um, until that day comes, I'm going to smile real big and talk Southern. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think there's great value in, in knowing that strength and being able to leverage that and lean into that for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you mentioned this uh, briefly at the top that when you were, you were in London for, for six months, uh, it was about a year ago during this time, you were, you were out there and you were in the West End, you were performing in Waitress. And, yes, uh, you know, I'm curious what that experience was like, if you could elaborate on that time, because keep oh, me sure. honest, again, that was your first time performing like that, right? In that context, like you'd done Second City, you'd done shows, but like, this was like night after night performances, West End, big deal. Just what, what was all that like for you, man? It was a big deal. Uh, it was just a much larger scale of anything that I had done before. I mean, besides doing plays in high school. And right. at Second City, you would be performing eight shows a week, six nights a week. But it was different. Like, mm -hmm. Chicago was my home. Um, mm -hmm. I was in my 20s. Like, it was just a different deal. But right. uh, this was, it was hard. It was hard, but I am so glad I said yes to it. Um, mm -hmm. I did love doing the same show night after night because you can still finesse things. You can still tweak things. If like, oh, they were laughing at that joke last week. I wonder why it's falling flat this week. Right. And then you just figure out how you can, you know, massage it back to where you need it. And then uh, also I loved my cast. My cast was my saving grace because you get homesick. You are right. in a foreign city for six months, which is a big chunk of time. Yeah. Also, the sun did not shine once, sir. Really? The sun did not oh, shine no. once. Oh, That's, no. Yeah. That's hard. That's a difficult situation to be in. Uh, <laughs> so hard. much new stuff already. And then to be deprived of sunlight is a big bummer. Human beings need sunshine. Mm. Uh, but at the end of the day, I'm so glad that I de did say yes to that uh, to that opportunity. Um, and yeah, I learned a lot about what that is. I learned a yeah. lot about myself. You know, I learned that I might not ever have to do that again. But you have to try. <laughs> you have to try. Interesting. Why, why would you say uh, you never have to do it again? Like, do you mean like you don't know if those opportunities are going to come? Or just like, I've done it once. I know what it is. I really enjoyed it. I don't know if I want to do it again. Like, I mean, a little of both. A little uh, of both, yeah. But also, too, like, how fortunate that I can be in a position where I can say yes, but with some conditions. For example, mm -hmm. maybe not six months, or maybe yeah. not six months in a city where the sun doesn't shine. Or maybe, you know, maybe not doing all eight shows a week. Whatever it is, I, I, I would need to figure out a more manageable way um, to make that work and not cry every night. <laughs> I, I hope to one day uh, be in a position where I get to see the, the Jack McBrayer writer that states uh, must have sunshine X amount of days Sir, to do the production. We're getting there. We're getting it's, close. It's pretty amazing. Um, I got to wrap things up and I got to let you go in just yes, a second. But uh, first of all, I want to remind everyone watching uh, of a couple of things. One, the thing I mentioned at the beginning is nokidhungry.org is a fantastic organization. So if you're watching this right now, take a look at them. I also want to remind them uh, about the Audible original Escape from Virtual Island, which is available right now. Uh, if you have an Audible account, go down. If you, do, if you don't have one yet, get, get one and listen to this thing immediately. Uh, it, you will be transported. It is hilarious. Uh, and it's just a fantastic uh, four and a half hours way to spend some time. Um, and I just want to say thank you, Jack. Uh, I'm so happy that you're doing well and that you, you're doing okay. That's more important than any of this, is that you're healthy and happy. Uh, I hope you're getting for some sunshine. For everybody. Yeah, yeah for sure. No, actually, the only person I'm concerned with is you, Jack. Sure. I don't know what's going on with the rest of the world, but I'm happy to know that you're okay. And that's all that matters sure. to me. <laughs> um, <laughs> anything else you want to say before we get out of here, man? No, sir. It's a real pleasure. It's it's really and truly, it's just nice to see human beings. <laughs>
Oh, I'm happy. That's no one's called me a human being for a very long time. So that's a high compliment. And I take that praise. Uh, Jack, you're awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, when all this blows over, I'd love whatever you work on next, whatever it is, come to New York and hang out with us in the studio. We'll do this and pr- we'll hug for real. We'll do it. We'll for real. Hug for real. Yes. yes. Sir. <laughs> uh, wherever you are out there in the world watching right now, uh, make some noise and, and celebrate the fact that we just got to hang out for a little bit with the great Jack McBray, everybody. Thank you, Jack, so much. Thank you all so much. Have a good one.